everyone, thank you for coming or for coming back. Today I'm going to show you how to make shortbread cookies. Now there are a lot of recipes for shortbread cookies and I even use more than one myself and I definitely wouldn't call this my go-to shortbread cookie recipe, but it is one that I really like to make every once in a while, mostly just because it's one of those recipes that's written on an old cue card by like your grandma or something. So I really love pulling it out to make these cookies. They are nice and sweet, nice and crumbly, nice and buttery, everything that a good shortbread cookie should be. So if we're all ready, the ingredients and measurements are listed down below so you can make these. So we are gonna start by gathering all of our ingredients and in a large bowl, we are going to mix together our flour, sugar, and salt. Go ahead and give this a quick mix together by hand just to get that all distributed and then we can add in our butter. Now, as you can see here, I've already went ahead and cut my butter into nice small cubes and that's gonna give me a little bit of a head start because we are going to crumble this up, rub it in our hands until we get it down to the smallest possible butter pieces that we can. So you're just going to keep on going, rubbing your fingers together, getting that butter all mixed into the flour and you want these to be as small of a piece as you can possibly get it. You want to pretty much not be able to tell that there's butter in this mixture and it is going to take a while but you will just have to keep on going and it'll get there eventually, don't worry. If you need to, you can go ahead and turn this out onto the counter so that you can see everything and make sure that you're getting at everything while you're mixing it all together. Now you won't really be able to tell just by looking at the dough that it's ready to go. So what you want to do to check and see if it's mixed enough is you're going to take a nice handful of the dough and you're going to press it together to sort of form a ball shape and then you're going to let go and you want to see that the mixture sort of holds that ball form. It will be able to break up easily if you try and break it up, but you just want it to hold that form and that's how you know that you're done mixing and that we can shape this. So to shape, you're just going to take all your crumbly dough piles and you're going to put them on a parchment lined baking sheet and you're going to carefully press this into a large circle that is about a half an inch thick. This might take a little bit of work to get it to all stick together, but just take your time, get it into a nice, beautiful circle, and then we're gonna put this whole thing in the fridge for 10 minutes, just to firm up a little bit before we cut it. So when our dough is done in the fridge, we can take it back out and cut it into wedges. So just with a sharp knife, cut it into triangles as big or as small as you want your cookies to be. I like to separate them just a little bit so that they don't completely seal back together in the oven. And then we're going to bake these at 350 until they are a nice golden brown color. These are ready to come out and they are lightly golden around the tops and they should be a little bit of a darker golden brown color around the edges. And then we can go ahead and let these cool. If these have risen or spread just a little bit so that they're sticking together again, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and cut them apart again with a knife while they are still warm, and then you can leave them to cool while we make our glaze. Now, this glaze wasn't in the original recipe, but I really do love adding just a little bit of extra flavor to things like this. So what you're going to do is just go ahead and take an orange, and you're going to zest half of it into your powdered sugar and then you're going to cut the orange in half and you're just going to slowly add enough of the juice from the orange that we can get our glaze to a nice glazing consistency. So once you have something that looks like it should be easy to spread on your cookies, go ahead and pour all of your glaze out onto your pile of cookies and go ahead and give them a nice little spread around just to get everything nice and coated. Here I'm just using a pastry brush, but if you just want to use a knife, that's fine. Or you could even just sort of drizzle these back and forth over the cookies to get a little bit of glaze on each one of them. Now all you have to do is leave these to set. It should only take about 20 or 30 minutes for them to harden enough that it won't drip all over you. But if you're too excited, you can always eat them right away. I just went ahead and transferred these onto a nice little tray and they are ready to serve. 
This is a really cute recipe. I do really love it. It's such a simple little shortbread recipe. And again, they're so buttery, so nice and crumbly and just everything I want in a shortbread cookie. So I hope you make these. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you next time.